The great battle raging between fire and water in the South Seas, the Atlanteans wished to extend their dominance, not just across the oceans, but also over the surrounding land. The Fire Kings defended their island against this aggression. Here will be revealed the story of the fierce battles between these two forces, and of the Mermail who were swept up into this war. The greedy ruler of the seas, the Atlanteans' endless desire to rule drove them to spread their forces, not only in the oceans, but also on the land. Their assault went undeterred until they ruled much of the southern landscape. With their influence and power spread that wide, they began making preparations to attack their long-held enemies, the Fire Kings, in their home volcano regions, Poseidra, the Atlantean ruler who is driven by endless greed. He created the Atlantean army to satisfy his desire to expand his territory, legendary Atlantean Tridon preyed upon lost Blue Breaker, and grew into Poseidon. Assault of the Atlantean troops, when the cunning Atlanteans began their assaults, they focused on areas that were inhabited by beings and groups without much power. They would absorb those lands into their territory and gain more power from them, then they would attack other weak areas again, and they repeated that process several times. By the time the inhabitants of nearby areas caught on, the problem had already become hard for them to manage, the Atlantean army launched its assault on the signal of the roar of Poseidra, which instilled fear into his own ranks and reminded those who feared death that there was no turning back. The Sanctuary's protectors, the Fire Kings protect a lone island, whose live volcano serves as both their sanctuary and their home. When they battle, their bodies flare up to their limits and burn up, but they reincarnate from within those flames. Thus, they manage to keep battling time and time again without being defeated, Garunix, a divine bird who boasts the most intense flames, even among the Fire Kings. He can create a sea of flames to scorch away any intruders who dare set foot in the sanctuary, Barong, Yiksha, and Kirin, the sanctuary's guardians who follow Garunix. Even if their bodies disappear in battle, their spirits live on, and their flaming power and souls are inherited by the next Fire King. The Fire Kings and Atlanteans clash, after expanding their territory farther and farther, the Atlanteans finally reached the Fire King's island and began their attack. Garunix had to burn himself to his limits against such an immense army, but he incinerated many of them. The Fire Kings sacrificed their very bodies to resist, and in the face of that, the Atlanteans could do nothing but retreat, at the command of the Roar of Poseidra, the Atlantean vanguards tried to invade the island. When Garunix faced their attack, his body turned golden, and he started assailing them from above, after the body of Garunix was incinerated into nothing, he returned to the volcano to reincarnate himself. The metropolis surfaces from the deep sea, one day, tectonic movements caused a sunken seafloor land to surface. Lemuria had been a highly advanced civilization in the past, and the surface world called it the discovery of the century, but the Mermail who'd made it their home knew that this meant it would be taken from them, Lemuria, a glorious city whose civilization and technology are both highly advanced. In the long distant past, tectonic movements caused it to sink into the ocean, and its name was since relegated to folk tales, the Mermail, the residents of Lemuria, a tribe that lived in the seas near Lemuria long before the city sank into the ocean. They had struggled to fight off their enemies, but they'd finally found calm in the sunken Lemuria. The legendary tribe from folklore, the water-dwelling Mermail also appear in the folklore about Lemuria. They have fearsome powers, but they dislike fighting, so, aside from some members of the Imperial Guard, they take on human-like appearances. But once they become determined to fight, they don mana-infused armor to defeat their enemies with unmatched power, abyss scorn is what happens when the Mermail reveal just a fraction of their power. Even someone like abyss Dine, who looks young and helpless, can be merciless in battles. The Mermail have great power even without their weapons. Mermail treasure, in addition to the three mana-infused armors, there is apparently another treasure that the Mermail guard. It is said that whosoever wields this treasure will be able to rule over them as their king. The Mermail King and the Legend of the Bracelet Usually, the Mermails are led by their queen, Abistrite, with their king nowhere to be seen. 
Some say that the person who manages to obtain a certain bracelet will become the Mermail King, but no one except the Queen knows where that bracelet is, Abistrite, the only being who knows the location of the bracelet which grants a measurable power. Rumor has it that it's hidden somewhere in Lemuria, but because Lemuria has surfaced, she no longer knows the exact location of the bracelet. The stolen treasure in King's Advent, upon hearing the rumors, the Atlanteans used the turmoil from the city surfacing to steal the bracelet and control the Mermail. They turned the battle against the Fire Kings in their favor by using the Mermail as vanguards in the assault. But Posidra got too full of himself and put on the bracelet, and instantly, his body began to change, and the Mermail King who was spoken of in legends appeared, the power of the bracelet is great, using it, the Atlanteans summoned a downpour that robbed the Fire Kings of their power and all others who dared to disobey them were reduced to bubbles in the ocean. The body of Posidra was taken over by the king residing in the bracelet. The king eliminated the Atlantean army with ease. It appears that Abistrite had sealed the bracelet away because the king's advent required a sacrifice.